Here we are in Straven, the main market town of Avondale, Lanarkshire, and we're standing on the mound, which was the original site of the medieval Norman wooden castle. Behind me you can see the town, uh, which of course was built in a depression, uh, which makes it the highest town that's actually in a hollow in this part of Scotland. The original medieval town starts just behind me here, at the bottom end, uh, and this is where the, the later castle that we know well from the family tales of the Covenanting time is sighted. Although we can't see it at the moment because it's carefully concealed behind some uh, good sized trees, but uh, we'll see it in about 10 minutes or so. Just at the bottom of the hill here, where the pink and white buildings are at the moment uh, is the site of the original tavern that Graham of Claverhouse made his headquarters uh, during the anti-covenanting campaign. This stone box was erected by the inhabitants of Straven in the 1850s, well into the times when it was safe, or safe as they thought, to talk about uh, the rebellious Scots openly. This marks the burial of two uh, victims of the Battle of uh, Drumclog, or the Rancounter of uh, the inscription is a bit well worn now, but you can see on this side it's dedicated to the memory of William Patterson and John Barry, who were shot to death for their adherence to the Word of God and our covenant. It's a chambered burial is the monument erected in the 1850s to two victims of the Covenanting Wars, uh, both of whom, as the, the inscription on the edge says, uh, died shot to death, shot to death for their adherence to the Word of God and our covenant. But as you notice from the side I'm standing on, as I say, it was only erected in the 1850s, well after the passing of the Reform Bill, uh, which brought uh, a more universal suffrage uh, to Scotland, and uh, was by that time a relatively safe time to mark the passing of the Scottish rebels. Now, what is it? There's a wee poem here. I can't read it Posterity shall... No, posterity shall what? Posterity shall know their... shot to death as... Here lies the corpse of William Dingwall who was shot in a rencounter at Drumclog, June the 1st, 1679, by Bloody Graham of Claverhouse, for adherence to the Word of God and Scotland's covenanted work, it says there. On this side it reads, This hero brave who here doth lie was persecuted by tyranny, yet to the truth he firmly stood against foes resisting to the blood. Himself and the gospel did defend. Um, 
one, right? And then it's the something for Christ's cause his life did end. Till for Christ's cause his life did end. This group of burials or layers in Straven Old Cemetery are the family burial places of the brown leaves of Avondale. The two long tablet stones head to tail in front uh, are the town families, the farmers, the weavers, the butchers of Straven. But the interesting thing is that immediately to uh, your left, as part of this plot, there's a stone, a modern, fairly modern stone, on its back. And this marks the secret burial of one of Scotland's last rebels of the 19th century. This is James Purley Wilson, weaver in Straven, next door neighbour uh, to the Brownlee clockmakers, not a 200 yards from here in the centre of the old town, who was executed in Glasgow. His uh, crime was to lead the Straven weavers in a rebellion in 1820, where they marched from Straven to Glasgow uh, with the original intent to join a rebellion that was to take place at that time and that, that, that day which never actually happened. It was actually a set-up uh, by government loyalists to winkle out the disaffected, the free thinkers, in other words, Straven Weaver, uh, to reveal themselves as traitors who could then be dealt with, imprisoned, banished, and, like Wilson, executed for their cause.